I look at a year ago, at this point I had one goal and zero assists. So I don't really, I don't like looking too much into the stats. I think as long as we keep doing the right things and keep focusing on the process, the stats will come for one guy or another. It doesn't really matter as long as the team is winning. Welcome to another edition of Maryland Men's Soccer Weekly Update. I'm Emily Olson, and as you can tell from my voice, I'm feeling a little under the weather. So this week, the update will mainly be a recording of my interviews with Captain Mael Corboz and Coach Sasha Sarovsky. Last time I talked to Sasha was before the Georgetown game. And so they've played two games since then. You've got Georgetown, and then you went to Wisconsin, where you won. What was the difference between those games in that week? Uh, to be honest, you know, we lost to Georgetown, but I think it was a pretty positive performance. We had uh, come off, you know, a few disappointing performances in the run of play against Michigan State. So I think there were a lot of positives from the Georgetown game. I think we kept that going against Wisconsin, and unfortunately things fell our way, and, you know, we were fortunate enough to win 4-1. But I think, you know, the past two games have been positive for us. And I think we just need to keep that going. alney has been scoring in several games. How has his impact coming in as a freshman, being this prolific scorer, been for the team, and specifically you up top? I mean, Sebastian's been great, obviously. Uh, he has six goals now, I think, so he's leading the Big Ten, which is definitely a positive for us. Um, you know, I, I think whether it's him or Eric or Amar or whoever, I think all the freshmen have done a really good job, and, you know, their attitudes on and off the field have been very good. So I think, you know, as long as they keep keep that attitude, keep working hard, um, goals will just fall in for them. You know, like Sebastian has six already. Eric, unfortunately, hasn't scored yet, but but uh, I think it's coming for him. I think just the whole freshman class has, has been uh, very good on, on and off the field, and, um, you know, that's just a product of the goals are just a product of all their hard work. And as far as you personally, goal scoring-wise, do you see yourself this season, last season you led the league with 10 goals, do you see yourself more as a goal scorer or creator this season with the team you have? I mean, I already have more assists this year than last year, so, you know, I think there's a more creative aspect to that. But then again, I look at a year ago, at this point I had one goal and zero assists. So I don't really, I don't like looking too much into the stats. I think, you know, as long as we keep doing the right things and keep focusing on the process, you know, stats will come for one guy or another. It doesn't really matter, you know, as long as the team is winning. So in terms of, you know, I don't try to overthink it, um, whether I'm going to score or whether I'm going to have an assist or what. I think, uh, you know, that just comes naturally. And as far as Northwestern last season, you've got some guys on the team that remember that game was a tough game. It was the last game you guys lost in regular season. Is it completely fresh going in, playing, playing them at home? Um, I mean, I think a lot of the returning guys still have, you know, bitter taste in their mouth from last year because that was really a tough game to lose. Um, but no, to be honest, we haven't really told the story to the freshmen. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I think we've done a little bit of video, and I think they have a decent idea of, of what Northwestern's going to be like. They're very disciplined and very organized and, you know, always always ready to work hard. And one last question. You know where the question's going. Yeah. Well, what's behind the, uh, the haircut? Um, <laughs> it was the night before we left for Wisconsin. Um, me and one of my roommates, Dakota Edwards, got pretty bored. So uh, I asked him to cut my hair. You know, one thing led to another, a couple mistakes in there, but uh, this is what came out. So, <laughs> do you uh, you regret it? Did you no, get some? No, no. I mean, I don't really care enough uh, to regret it or get angry at Dakota. No, this. Uh, I mean. We just laugh about it now, and I think it looks pretty funny on TV, so I'm not, I'm not too worried about that. What changed between Georgetown and Wisconsin? Yeah, I think against uh, Georgetown, I think we had uh, 13 shots and only three were on target. Against Wisconsin, we had 12 shots and seven were on target. Our, our spacing and our attention to execution being more dangerous uh, in our attack really improved. Uh, you know, we, we certainly we got two goals in our first two opportunities against Wisconsin, and uh, I think the guys really uh, took to the challenge of being a little sharper, uh, you know, being a little more threatening, and making better decisions on, on their shots and their crosses, and it, it paid dividends. Uh, so, um, but it was good for us to, to get some of those things. Hopefully we can carry it forward into Northwestern and beyond. And someone that scored several times this season, Sebastian Elney, going into the season highly scouted as that scorer. Has he lived up to the expe expectations of his scouting, and, and what has he been for you so far this season? 
Well, you know, he's delivered on the goals, but what's pleased me the most about Sebastian has just been his, his humility and his attitude. He's, 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 um, sometimes when you have players with big reputations and have accomplished quite a bit, they come in and they feel a little entitled and, and, and you sort of have to knock them down a notch, but he's been extremely coachable. Uh, he's just a, a great young man, so he's been an absolute joy to coach. He wants to get pushed. He wants to be great, and he's, he's on his way. Have you seen the same resilience in this team as as in the past? Well, you know, we're very different teams from last year. You know, we're starting seven new players almost every game and five freshmen, so we certainly are learning from the past, but we're trying to have this team create its own identity, and, and uh, you know, we, we didn't want to get in the same hole we got in last year, and thankfully we're not... In, that, in as big a hole. And a little more fun aspect of this talk. Um, last night I watched the U.S. Open Cup, and for me, I was sitting there, went into PKs, yeah, I saw Maurice yeah. oh, shoot God, and miss, yeah. and then and Graham makes yeah. his shot, he yeah. makes it, and then you're sitting there listening to Taylor Twelman commentate. What is it like for Sasha? What's it like for you to, to watch two players on two separate teams and hear a former player? Well, <clears throat> all right, so it's a good question. So Sasha spent most of... 7 to 9, 9 o'clock last night with a computer in front of me watching my daughter play at Bucknell because that's the top priority. Uh, but I also was watching on the second TV in the background the, the, the Sporting Kansas City Philadelphia Union game and uh, I was very proud. Maurice had a very strong game. Graham had a very strong game, got strong, you know, great second half. And then Taylor obviously is, is just, he's become such a personality. Uh, and, and I thought he was he was fantastic yesterday too. So so it's uh, it's nice to see my extended family of former players uh, on the big stage is doing well. But my priority was to watch my daughter play for Bucknell against uh, against Lafayette. So that, that's where that was.